I just got back from LA where I was at the Blizzard headquarters. Me and some other content creators were there in order to test both the Spiritborn as well as get a little bit of a sneak peek at the new expansion for Diablo 4. Now, as we know, the new expansion is Vessel of Hatred. I was able to see some of the new strongholds, a little bit of the new area. Didn't really get to experience the new storyline or quest because they kind of didn't want to leak, you know, the story basically. It makes sense. But we were able to at least see some of the new areas, some of the new visuals, some of the new monsters, and of course, what you guys really want to talk about, the new class, Spiritborn. So I'm going to break down the trip in its entirety, the Spiritborn class, as well as a little bit that we were able to see of the expansion. So day one, arrived, just socialized with the other content creators, nothing too much to talk about there, got to meet everyone. I've talked about this already in the previous video. Everyone is super nice. So content creators, 10 out of the 10 people. The next day was a long day on campus. Started with a campus tour, get to see all of the statues. They actually have their own museum there, which is cool, which shows, right now I think it's Warcraft Rumble related stuff. Last time I was there was Diablo 4 related stuff, but they have like a million different Diablo statues on campus. Get to see where they actually work. Then they took us into the testing area, where in the testing area, Area, there was a whole bunch of computers and they had four pre-programmed builds for the spirit born for us I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself as there was actually an introduction video that they go kind of hype everyone up explain both a little bit of the lore of the spirit born effectively the spirit born is sort of like it sounds like they are spirit born they have spirit protectors they actually summon there's four different ones there's centipede gorilla jaguar and ego and you actually do sort of pair these together. So you can pick two different spirits that sort of give you passive bonuses. And there is skill trees with those four different types of abilities. There's like gorilla abilities, jaguar abilities, ego abilities, for instance. And most of the build is going to be related to synergies between these two. You can, of course, focus down on like all gorilla if you want. Gorilla is like a defensive one. Centipede is like a dot one. They call it centipede balance, whereas gorilla is sort of like tanky. I forget the actual, I think protector or something is the term they use there. Jaguar is like a fast multiple strike type of character. And then ego is about mobility and sort of more range. They have these cool feathers that you throw out that like can get summoned back and stuff. So there's multiple builds they have pre-programmed related to which one of these different spirit protectors you're really mostly interested in. Now I say spirit born and spirit protectors and all this, effectively spirit born's the class, spirit protectors are the dudes you're summoning, which are like spirit gods. There's like a spirit realm that's sort of, you're able to make contact with as a spirit born. They show the whole trailer in the beginning where there's a whole bunch of like kids walking out to the forest and it's only the strong will survive and basically all of them except one die, you, you're the spirit born. And it's the one that's able to interact with the spirit world and some and like these multiple different types of creatures like a centipede who's balanced the gorilla and the jaguar and the ego and all that so that's where most of the lore background of it really comes from now i'm not like a massive lore guy so i'm not really gonna get into the lore too much that's just like my very very generic overlook of it if you just want the spirit born explained now about the spirit born before we dive into all of the different spirit protectors and types of builds there are the spirit born during the interview, it was asked why the spirit born, basically. There's a lot of questions related to the paladin, you know, like where's the paladin, etc. But they were asked, why why is the reason for the spirit born? And were you guys excited about the spirit born? And the answer was an interesting one. Basically, what it breaks down to is because it's a class that's sort of a, a clean template that hasn't been done before, it doesn't really pigeonhole them into having to have certain type of abilities. For instance, if you bring a paladin, a crusader, what have you, it's pretty much predetermined what kind of abilities that is going to have. You might expect a horse, a hammer, a laser beam, you know, these types of abilities. And so when they're doing something so out of the ordinary, like the spirit born, that's, you know, not out of place, but out of the norm for Diablo, then it gives them the ability to come up with kits, items, you know, skills, paragon trees, and, and builds, and ways of synergizing those builds together that haven't really been done before. And that was one of the things they were excited about, about the spirit born. So when we talk about the four different spirit protectors, the centipede, the gorilla, the jaguar, and the ego, it's going to sound very different than the other classes because it very much is. You can go all the way in the centipede, all the way in the gorilla, all the way in the jaguar or eagle, or you can have a combination of any or as few as many of these as you possibly want. And there's unique and legendary items that will fit each of these different play styles. In fact, there's even one that's like a Frosty LaRue troll build where there's an aspect that having more basic abilities, like using only basic abilities, having more of them, actually scales your damage based upon how many different basic abilities you are using. So there's some pretty crazy type of builds that might end up being potential. Now, I'm not saying all of them are going to be meta, but there's going to be a pretty big variety, at least in play styles that you can choose to mess around with. 
but also because you're mixing multiple of the different class passives. You know, there's, for instance, like the centipede one gives you slow and damage reduction as the passive, right? But then the jaguar one is going to give you something completely different. Because you're mixing these passives, there is the ability for you to not just focus on only going solely down one of them. In fact, there's uniques based upon actually mixing multiple of the different types of protectors, and there's a unique helmet based upon actually going full down into only one of them. Now, we didn't find all the uniques during the playthrough. This is just what we heard from the interview, for instance. But if you want to go all the way into Centipede, all the way into Gorilla, all the way into Jaguar, all the way into Ego, that's possible. Or if you want to mix as many different ones as you can, that's possible. And during the interview, which I'll be posting, they talk about how one of the reasons they were excited to make the Spiritborn class was because of the ability for them to go very unique. So what does each one of these different spirit protectors slash class synergies really have? So they gave us four pre-builds, which were locked at level 30. We weren't able to go past level 30. There wasn't like infinite resources where we can generate any builds we want. They had sort of pre-programmed builds. Now there was the Centipede, Jaguar, Ego, and Gorilla related builds. And I'll show you corresponding footage with each of them as I talk about them. Now the Centipede is the balance class and is the reason they call it balance is it's supposed to be like you're damaging them and feeding yourself. So there's lots of aspects and, and skills related to dotting them and then regenerating off of the dot, etc. I will say Centipede was easily my favorite. It had this giant summon that kind of stays with you and shot like a laser beam. It was actually really cool. And the dots would spread and explode also on crit. So you would be dotting people, it would explode and spread around them. And you're constantly, uh, one of the aspects is you'd be summoning these swarms that would hit everyone with dots. It was the first time dots in Diablo 4 actually felt good. In fact, if, if you watch other people's videos, I'm just going to take a wild crapshoot here and say most people probably like Centipede. Because when I was there talking to everyone, everyone was like, Centipede seems OP. Like, Centipede seems great. Now, I will say, hold on just a moment, though, because... This could be the type of situation like we had with the beta, where we were only able to play the level 25, game felt great and all that, and it wasn't until later that the in-game stuff was acknowledged. So because this was so early, we didn't have Paragon boards yet, there wasn't a full deep dive into the class where they only gave us like two legendary aspects to start and we had to find the rest as we went. Because of that, it's not a true like tier list. We can't because of level 30 say Centipede's the best out of all of them. But from the playthrough we did, Centipede felt very, very, very good. And there is pairings with uh, other other aspects or other spirit protectors, I should say. For instance, the gorilla with the thorns paired with centipedes because some of the aspects had synergy between what they both scale off of, like thorns, for instance. The gorilla is a super interesting one because of how tanky it can be, as well as how the defenses scale the offenses with aspects like having more armor makes you basically convert that into damage. Having lots of different thorns aspects, having more ways that your thorns actually apply different percentages onto people. You know how there's that one thorn aspect that it does like 200% of your thorns in AOE or whatnot onto minions? Well, they have more of those thorn related aspects coming into the game. So there is a significant increase in a defensive slash offensive mix being able to play together. Gorilla had some pretty cool features too. For instance, there's one that when you would get stunned, you just don't become stunned. You become like unstunnable basically. And then you can sit there and just constantly spam the ability that otherwise has a cooldown. You like go on like a roid rage of like just spamming your move. So there's a there's a lot of thematics around it. Like the gorilla, the way the gorilla comes in, he like comes over your head and like smashes basically. So thematically wise the grill is on point as well, just like the centipede was. And that's going to be a consistent thing that I'm going to bring up when I'm talking about each one of these sort of builds or class specs or whatever you want to call it, because that's definitely consistent. So the Jaguar was a lot of people's favorites, um, probably second only to the centipede. And the reason is, is because it was fun and it also was a hyper mobile. So it's got a lot of like teleporting to each one of the different minions, for instance. And it also had a lot of like really fast rapid attacks. So it felt like you were really blasting through. I mean, I think I was killing faster with the centipede, but the Jaguar felt like you're warping through. It felt like a rogue for instance, if that makes sense. Whereas the gorilla maybe felt like a, like a really tanky barbarian or something, and like a thorns barb or something. And then the centipede felt like maybe like a poison creeper druid, for instance. And then, you know, so you have a very different style of play. In fact, I would argue that uh, between all of the classes, 
Spearborn probably is going to have the most variety in terms of the way it feels to play each one of these. So if you like multiple attacks very quickly, if you like basic attacks, if you like, uh, you know, the multi-hit strikes and to be able to teleport through minions, that was definitely Jaguar. And they definitely keep with their thematics. In fact, the armor itself, one of the things they mentioned when they were talking about the thematics and sort of showing the class to us before we got our hands on it, was that each one of the classes like armor, like the aspects that are related to that sour protector, centipede, gorilla, ego, jaguar, each of those aspects that relate to that uh, end up looking like that creature. So if you're wearing like the jaguar ones, you, you, the transmog that it looks like is you look like a jaguar, or if you're wearing the gorilla one, you kind of look like a gorilla, or if you're doing the uh, the centipede one, like it kind of looks like a centipede. So thematically, it's all very on point. So the jaguar is definitely like full on melee andy, you're right up in the face, you're attacking fast, a little bit squishier, but faster attacks, lots of damage. Like that's the whole point of the jaguar is supposed to warp through the packs and getting rewarded for kill streaks type of situation. And it leaves us with the ego. For me, this was the least favorite one, but a lot of people did actually like it. You're summoning in a big ego pretty commonly and you're shooting out like these feathers that can like boomerang back so it's almost like a mid-range like it felt like a mid-range build to me where you're constantly like throwing things out and bringing them back like a boomerang like there's multiple skills that had boomerang for instance and you had this really cool ability on your evade that turn that turns it into like a sore uh, it, it's a normal ability but you can get it as one of the aspects that turns it or i think it's one of the uniques actually that turns your movements your movement skill your your evade button there actually into that ability so you're like warping up and then going down it reminds me a little bit of like lightning or storm druid there was like uh almost like a cyclone i think i think it was called tempest or something i forget exactly which which like sucks people in and your soar actually cast that one of the things they were talking about they really liked with this is they were focusing on having abilities that cast other abilities because they know you're limited on skill slots so what they wanted to do and they did this with ego in particular but also some of the other classes or uh, other specializations is that you would have abilities that like summon other abilities so maybe you get a one proc it summons the other one that procs this one and then you can have uniques that you know uh, have synergies between the two etc so you're actually able to get more cast down that's part of the reason what they did with soar were with the unique where you're able to use your evade in order to turn that actually into uh, that ability so you can take it off of your bar for instance there's definitely more of a focus on ultimates, I feel like. Uh, in fact, the ultimates have, it seems like, shorter cooldowns and more cooldown uh, reduction that you're able to get with it. Someone mentioned in the interview, I forget exactly what he said, but he mentioned about how the cooldown seems so low. Like, are they worried about it breaking the game or not? And their response to this essentially was, no, we just want people to be able to use their ultimates. Like, we feel like, yeah, they can be kind of long. We want people to have fun with them. So we're going to try to make them, you know, up more often. And I thought that was a pretty good answer. And that's definitely what it feels like when you're, playing the Spiritborn, like you're able to use your ultimates, feels like much more commonly than some of the other classes. So that's just like a kind of a very quick breakdown of each of the four different protectors. So what did I like and what did I not like about the class? Okay, so just right off the top, Spitfire to you, the variety, absolutely the variety is pretty cool. Like they, like I said before, each one of these different like specializations feels very different. The aspects seemed like they're trying to bring in new styles that haven't been done before with like just tons of thorns. I know thorns barbs is a thing, but they're trying to make thorns like actually even better, which I thought was pretty cool. Defensive becoming offensive, the ability to synergize uh, things like thorns into your offense, like gorilla and centipede are supposed to synergize together and like jaguar and ego for the mobility plus the multi hit. Like they're supposed to make it where you can kind of mix match each one of your different types of class passives because the class passives are a big part of the class. So I definitely like the variety for sure. Visually, I thought the class was very unique and cool too. I liked the visuals. I thought maybe, maybe a little mildly cheesy, you know, it's like, ah, oh, big gorilla, smash, you know. The centipede was different. I liked that, you know, I thought it was just going to be like a snake or something like very stereotypical, but they went with a centipede. That's pretty cool. You know, ego, ego soar and come down. So like maybe it's a little generic you know but still cool visually appealing though i agree with crip very visually demanding in terms of your space on the monitor but that's pretty cool too i think people are going to actually like it because it's actually a fun class so number three for me variety visuals and fun it's actually a fun class to play. Again, only played level 30, but I enjoyed it when I was playing it. It was quite fun. So I think most people are probably going to have a fun time playing the class as well. What I not like about the class, well, I mean, I hate to double dip here, but yeah, visual clutter is, is definitely an issue. I just got to say it because I think a lot of us are thinking this. It's not a paladin. So I think a lot of people wanted other classes. It's something fresh and unique, which is cool. I'm excited for fresh and unique. It's probably just not the class people wanted. It's not ne necessarily a negative for the class itself, but you know, 
a holy class would have been pretty cool. But honestly, I just don't really have like a ton of negatives around it. I, I had a good time testing it. I sat here and thought for a minute before I hit record again because um, I was thinking like, yeah, I, I should be able to drag something up. But I'm having to I'm having to try a lot harder to drag up negatives related to the class more so than positives. You know what I mean? Like the positives come fairly quick and the negatives actually take a little bit of a while for me to sit here and process the brain. So instead of trying to drag up five things to make it even or something like that, I'm just going to say there's not a lot of negatives. Maybe it's a little cheesy. Maybe a little cheesy. You know, Jaguar, Gorilla, a little Power Rangery, probably, to be honest. But I actually kind of liked it. So I, I, you know, I think that's fine. I think it fits Diablo. I mean, we're returning to Nahantu. If I hadn't played Diablo 2, I might not understand like the whole jungle vibe as much, but I did, and I understand, yeah, it fits, and it's also not, like, some super, like, childish class, like, the cinematic is pretty brutal, like, they send a bunch of kids in the jungle, and, like, everyone fucking dies except one guy, like, it's pretty, like, cold the weak, the strong will survive, you know, it's be a giga chat and live, you know, I mean, the dudes are shredded, you know, I mean, it's not a druid type of situation over here, so, like, I, ah, eh, they're kind of full giga chads, like, I, 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 I actually kind of like the class. I'm sure some people are going to say that it is a paywalled class, in which it is, and I guess the response to that would be that it is extremely consistent with the Diablo franchise itself, but you yourself will have to decide after watching everyone's videos, and I'd recommend watch more than just mine in order to get an informed opinion and watch all of the ones that myself and other people come out with talking about this more in detail. You have to decide if it's worth your $40 or not. I'm not going to say whether or not it is because it's different for everybody. If you're asking how much I like the class, I would say that I think a solid seven and a half is a fair rating. I liked it a lot, little cheesy. I would give it a higher rating, but I got like less than two hours of gameplay in a early game account that didn't get to do even any of the in game we already have or anything. I don't really get to give it a fair score. I don't even think seven and a half is fair, high or low. I'm just taking a crapshoot of what I'm guessing here because. It was a very short test. I would say it would have been a little bit nicer to have closer of like four hours and maybe like a level 30, a level 70, a level 90 build or something like that. But maybe they couldn't show the Paragon trees. Maybe it wasn't rainy. I don't know. They didn't give any reasons, but it was a very early play test. So I'm going to be very like put an asterisk on my seven and a half rating. Good, borderline great. I thought it was actually fairly unique and cool. Couple caveats. And definitely not a full rating because the class is like, oh, we, didn't, we did not get enough time to give a fair assessment. I just want to make that, underline that point. It was a very quick test. It was definitely for promotional reasons. And while they did fly us all out there, like, I don't know about the other people, but I was not paid to be there. Just to be clear, this is not a paid video. It was This was pretty much they fly basically everyone and their mother out there, let's be honest, there was like 100 people there, including press and everything. So this is like a promotional reel for them. It's a marketing campaign is what it is. And I can understand that, which is probably why it was so limited in scope. Um, and they had a lot of people to burn through there. So that's just the best rating I can give it as it currently stands, or at least my best understanding of it. I would definitely wait for more information if you're looking to purchase. And uh, in my personal opinion, it was a lot of fun. Now let's talk about the expansion portion. I would say I was pleasantly surprised. By the, I was only able to go to two areas. There was a couple crashes because it was not, there was one area that you couldn't go or it would crash. And there was one time where if I'm going in a mountain to party, like it would crash as well. A couple bugs to be expected. It's very, very, very early access, the most early of, of accesses. So it would make sense. Um, I had similar crashes, for instance, like POE testing as well. So this is, there's a precedent for crashes in these types of tests. Uh, but I would say that it was actually encouraging playing the new areas because it did look visually different. One of the questions I asked during the interview, and we all got a chance to ask questions, and most people were hitting them hard with like the paladin stuff and balance related issues. So I didn't really have to tackle those. So most of my questions were very easy ones around like audio, visual, like just stuff I'm curious about for myself personally. And like, how did you guys, in fact, the one question I did ask, which I'm going to talk about now is, how were you guys able to develop like a jungle, a colorful area in a game that is so notorious for being monochromatic and a return to darkness is sort of the catch hook on that. And so their response to this is, is effectively that just because it's a return to darkness doesn't necessarily mean that they can't add 
portions of color into it and that the portions of color they do add will pop out more because it is sort of that you know monochromatic type of vibe which i agree with because one of the things i actually quite liked about it was we got a chance to test a new stronghold and not only did it have really cool visual appeal but it had some like unique mechanics so they're starting to change things up a little bit or at least have some differences like it's not, not just another stronghold go kill three demons you're done this one actually was like dark everywhere you go and it had like a very deep underwater type of vibe where uh you know there's iridescent things and you had to hold up a torch or a lantern that you brought with you and one person could bring the lantern and the other person could dps for instance and that's how you would have to see around the dark and then you would light like torches as you would go and then eventually the boss at the end was a dark relay the mechanic where you had to light torches and fight him within the light so it was you know fairly unique not just go kill this blood boy because he's got a line attached to it and he's immune if you don't so uh, me and Riker were both immediately impressed by hey like these are these are real mechanics, you know, like they're actually doing something here, which was really encouraging and actually visually quite different. So, you know, uh, shout out to them for that because the, the, the stronghold that we went to was actually very fun, enjoyable and very different and actually fairly long as well. So that was just one stronghold. I don't know if it was sort of a put your you know best side up front type of situation, um, but if it continues that level of visual appeal as well as that level of, of I won't say depth, but you know changing it up in terms of mechanics and stuff throughout the rest of the area, I think it'll be a quite a fun expansion. I was able to see some of the other areas. Some of the areas didn't look too different, but some of them definitely had that jungle vibe. There was this really cool area I went to that had like this giant glowing pot that seemed like it definitely would be, you know, our cauldron, I suppose, that would probably be part of some main quest line or something that we haven't seen yet. So the visual appeal in the new area is definitely there. New monsters, obviously. It's the expansion. It's a new area. Everything you would expect within the jungle and in the underwater theme that was in that one area, etc., don't need to name them. They're pretty much all there. You know, everything from mosquitoes to snakes or whatever you want to call it. And there were some throwbacks. Uh, actually, one of the things that we noticed was in the loading screen, there was a portion where it sounded like they were playing Diablo 2 music, like real quickly to you, like that, like from the guitar, just like teased you with it. And I don't know if we're going to get like full nostalgia mode D2 music or not, but I did ask them about that in the interview. I stated that, you know, it seemed like there was a throwback to Diablo 2 music. Are we going to be receiving Diablo 2 music or that type of, you know, question? And their answer to this uh, was interesting. He didn't say no, but he, he threw out basically said, well, there's going to be some fan service for, you know, Diablo 2 in particular. Like, there's going to be some callbacks and some things you will recognize. And he had kind of a smirk on his face and he was happy to be able to say that. So if you're a fan of Diablo 2, I would expect there will be some fan service for you in there especially since we're going, you know, back to Act 3 effectively. And having recently replayed through Diablo 2 on live stream, you can join us at twitch.tv slash Darth Microtransaction. We stream pretty much every day at this point. Um, it was really obvious to me that there definitely was going to be callbacks. I mean, that's sort of the whole point. We're returning to this. Mephisto's coming back. This is the area, you know, the Mephisto so stone is basically from anyway, to my understanding and re recollection of the lore. So there's going to be a significant amount of that if I had to assume. So a couple things just sort of in closing. Um, I didn't get to see a whole lot of the expansion, just some of the new areas, really just enough to see visual appeal was a thing. And there's definitely some new unique mechanics and new uh, monsters, etc., new bosses, uh, things of that nature, new strongholds, all of the things you would expect from an expansion. And uh, the new class, I got to try out the new class, had a good time with the new class. A few caveats. Definitely didn't get to play enough of either the expansion or the new class to have a real informed should you buy it or not. I went back in that for you guys if you're considering the purchase. I just think they did not give us enough time to test it in order for me to give you a full yes, buy it now. But I will say, with that being said, that I actually quite enjoyed the playthrough that I had. It was only two hours or something anyway, and about an hour and 45 minutes of it before I had to start transferring my files. But I actually did have quite a good time. I enjoyed my playthrough for whatever that's worth of you. And I was a little bit more surprised than I thought I was going to be. So if you can deal with maybe a little bit of cheese around the new class, a little power ranger, I'm the gorilla spirit born and I'm the centipede spirit born and I'm the ego spirit born, then you know you might actually quite like the class for the variety of the builds that will be available and the different variety of play styles. So if you were worried that when the class comes out, you think it's just not for you, I think most people will be able to find something they like about the spirit born. With that being said, the fact that I enjoyed my time, keep in mind, this is a giant promotional 
you know, marketing thing that they did by bringing us all out, press out and everything. So I'm sure they're, you know, expecting people to have a good time because, you know, we got wined and dined and go to Dave and Buster's and all kinds of fun things. But I did legitimately enjoy my playthrough. So just everything up front there. So for whatever that's worth for you, subscribe if you want to. If not, don't worry about it. I'm going to have a lot more videos talking about both my time there. Uh, on the next video I'll probably put out is all of the skills just so you can see them almost like a wikipedia so that way you can see them if you want as well as all the aspects etc for the class i did make sure to go through the occultist and the skill tree and all of that so i'll just dump that information why so you can pause throughout the video and see all of that and i'll have the interview up here on this channel and stuff as well so that's about it hope you enjoyed my yapping i'll see you on the next one